in this lecture session i am going to discuss about the topic on single phase half wave control rectifier with rle load before going into this lecture session first we should understand what is the concept of rle load so at first let we consider a simple loop construction of dc motor let me draw the diagram first this is suppose n pole this is s and this is a flux line and the direction of the flux that is from n to s pole in this way and we can place a single copper conductor rectangular shaped which is directly connected to the dc supply that is v in so this is actually the loop construction of dc motor and just recall the operation that means when we have applied the dc supply then the current starts flowing throughout the conductor that is suppose i okay and when the current starts flowing across the conductor so we can say this current carrying conductor we are placing in a uniformly flux distributed area that has occurred due to presence of two field magnets actually we consider these two field magnet that is actually taken from the basic construction of dc motor that is the stator part okay and the rectangular shaped copper conductor this naked copper conductor assume this is supposed taken from the armature winding so we can represent this total diagram by a motor means this is the stator part and the inner part that is the armature part now during working principle when we apply the dc supply then the current starts flowing in this way to the to the total conductor that means we can say now we are placing the current carrying conductor so as per the faraday's law it experiences a some amount of force due to presence of the in and s and as we know the conductor which is very which is placed near to n pole and the conductor which is placed near to s pole then the direction of the force will be opposite as the opposite force is acting at this particular conductor then the conductor starts moving to a to a, to a direction that depends on the fleming's light hand rule whatever when the conductor starts moving that what happen then again it can satisfy the faraday's law we know as per the faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction when the conductor starts cutting few amount of flux then an emf is induced on that particular conductor same thing can happen in this particular case here when the conductor starts moving to a particular direction then what happen then a current then an emf is induced on this particular conductor rectangular shaped copper conductor and as per the lenz's law we know this emf just opposite of the original voltage source that is why the direction of the current due to movement of the conductor it will be just opposite of the original voltage source that means this current always try to oppose the original current okay that is actually defined by the lenz's law so we can say during the movement of the rectangular shaped copper conductor in that particular uniformly distributed flux area then the emf that is defined by eb as per the lenz's law that is minus eb that is opposite of the original voltage source that is v in this is actually called e right fine next is when next when the current starts flowing i am talking about this original current when the current starts flowing throughout the conductor of the armature here it is represented by the single copper conductor there must have some ohmic drop if we assume the conductor has a resistivity suppose r a so we can say the when the current starts flowing that is called actually i a into r a that is the drop across the conductor that means we can say it has a resistivity 
that is stands for R and as the inductive effect is there and which will follow the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so that is why the total armature winding which is defined by L okay that is why the complete solution is for the load application of the DC motor that is RLE load so this is the concept of RLE load that actually represents the DC motor okay now we can explain the actual part of the discussion that is single phase half wave control rectifier with RLE load first let we go to the diagram first okay so this is the schematic circuit diagram of the single phase half wave control rectifier with RLE load which is constructed by the AC supply and that is defined by Vm sin omega t. Uh, SCR is there and the terminal voltage across the SCR that is defined by Vt and RLE load which represents the actual the motor application or DC motor and the terminal voltage across the load that is defined by V0 and the current which is flowing throughout the load that is actually defined by I0 and the all axis that is given in the right hand side of the figure that is the supply voltage Vs this one is the gate current that is Ig this is V0 or output voltage this is I0 for output current and this is Vt terminal voltage across the switch during off state okay now the selection of minimum firing angle actually see the waveform first let go to the waveform first we should understand the working principle okay that means when we applied the supply above him in this particular circuit then what happened when the supply voltage goes positive as well as we are applying the triggering pulse across gate then the switch will be in on state and the circuit current or the actual supply current starts flowing throughout the circuit okay now the question is where we should implement the particular getting pulse across gate means the selection of the minimum getting pulse or selection of the alpha here we can represent the part that is by theta 1 and theta 2 first see when the supply voltage goes positive okay in this particular case then at the point of E which is defined by the RLE load that is always in the upper part of the axis that is by this one okay so that means what E means that is the opposite direction of the supply voltage that means if we consider when the supply voltage is upper part is positive and negative under the first positive half cycle so across load it should be positive and it should be negative that means if we consider this is a reference of the uh, means polarity upper part will be positive and the upper part will be negative that means when the switch remaining off then E is responsible to delivering the across the total voltage across the load that means due to presence of this back EMF the upper part will be again positive and lower part will be again negative that is my for the both cases the voltage appearing across the load that is positive that is why we should draw this E by this straight line and which is in the in the positive side okay now the selection of this fading angle theta 1 see when we are applied the sinusoidal signal or the sine um, AC supply that means when the supply goes positive and it will reaches to a particular value at the point of this one where the E and the original supply waveform has coincide at this particular point suppose which is defined by theta 1 here that means what at this point we can write what we can write the expression that is Vm sin theta that should be equal to E as the both magnitudes are same. So we can write from this point that is Vm sin theta 1 that should be equal to E. That means we can write that is what? That is theta 1 that should be equal to sin inverse under bracket E by Vm 
that means this is the minimum amount of firing angle up to which if we apply the getting pass at this point 0 to alpha sorry 0 to theta 1 the SCR will not be triggered. Why? Because in between this particular position all the cases C E is in higher magnitude with respect to supply voltage. As the nature of supply voltage is gradually increases up to the point of E at the point of theta 1. That means before theta 1 all the cases the value of supply voltage that is less than the value of back EMF E. That means if you consider in this diagram up to the point of alpha 1 the supply voltage the magnitude of the supply voltage is less than the back EMF E. That means the thyristor will be in reverse biasing condition. Under any situation it will not be turned on. That is why if we are one, if we want to turn on this thyristor, that means the firing angle should be higher with respect to theta 1. A similar case happen in this case also. Okay? That means we cannot the, apply the firing angle after theta 1, then same thing will be repeated. The thyristor will be in reverse biasing condition. That is why the particular region of the firing angle that should be from the that should be above theta 1 and below theta 2. This is the region of the firing angle. During operation, consider we have applied the triggering pulse across the gate above theta 1. That is suppose defined by alpha. Okay. So during operation, when the supply voltage goes positive and we have applied the triggering pulse across gate at an angle alpha which is greater than theta 1 then the thyristor will be turned on. Once the thyristor will turn on then the circuit current IS that easily can flow throughout the load. That means we can say immediately the supply voltage will be reflected on the load part. Okay. That is why up to the point of alpha where we have not applied the triggering pulse then the load voltage that should be leaded by this back EMF E that is why we have drawn this that is the back EMF E. When the thyristor is fired then the device starts conducting and immediately the supply voltage will be reflected on the load that is why the same the similar pattern that should be followed in case of the load voltage. That is why the similar pattern has followed in case of load voltage. Again, we are applied the next triggering pulse up to the next biasing, up to the next cycle. That means 2 pi plus alpha. So up to this point, I am talking about this point to this point, then the switch is off. Now the question is why it is extended? I had discussed in the previous lecture session for RL operation during the presence of the L okay in the first mode operation when the L has charged to a particular value when the reverse when the negative cycle starts after suppose the point pi then this inductor try to discharge and during discharge the inductor current and during charging the inductor current both are remaining same position that is why during discharging path so still the device is under on state as we are applied the reverse biasing across the switch. That is why up to the point at which the stored energy of the inductor that will not completely discharge then the, then the switch will not be off. That is why it will be extended up to this point from pi to beta. Anyways so we can consider due to presence of this RL load the total conduction time that is beta minus alpha which is defined by this one. Okay. Now the question is alpha after beta what is what happened? After beta as well as we know the normal property of the sine wave as the switch is under reverse biasing condition as well as the current across the load that is zero that means no circuit current is there that means automatically the switch will be off. Once the switch is off, then immediately the voltage appearing across the load that is not coming from the supply voltage that should be followed by the back MFE. That is why it will not be zero, it will be that is E again. So when the switch is off, 
then the no question for the supply voltage which will be appearing across the load that is why the load voltage will be leaded by the back emf that is why this is defined by this line okay again we have applied the next triggering pulse across the point of 2 pi plus alpha and once the switch becomes on then immediately the load voltage will be followed by the supply voltage in this way so in this way the cycle will be repeated for the next purpose onward now in case of output current as we know due to presence of the inductor when switch on the device then the current will be gradually increases up to a value that is why when the thyristor is in on state at the point of alpha then the current is gradually increases to a certain value at this point the inductor is fully charged that is why inductor try to discharge at the same time at the point of alpha after that as the supply voltage goes negative then the inductor try to discharge with an with an slope didt slope and inductor is finally completely discharged at the point of suppose this point which is defined by alpha so this is the discharging point that is why the inductor charged from zero value to higher value uh, from alpha to pi and inductor starts discharging from alpha to bit sorry from pi to beta at this point so this is actually for the conduction time okay so this is all about for the waveform in case of the output current in this particular waveform it is easily found that there is a discontinuity because in this particular region from beta to next triggering pulse applied for the next cycle that is 2 pi plus alpha at this particular region there is a no current the current value is zero again it will be started from the next cycle that is why as the current is discontinuous due to which we can say this is actually discontinuous mode of operation so now this is all about for the all parameters suppose vs ig v0 and i0 now i am talking about vt is a very simple part as we know in case of any switch when the switch is on then the total supply voltage will be appeared across load when the switch remains off then the total supply voltage will be appearing across load sorry will be appearing across that switch that is why in this particular region from 0 to alpha then the switch remains off that is why the supply voltage will be appeared across this particular switch similarly at this particular region when the switch was in not conducting state i am talking about that is beta to 2 pi plus alpha in this particular region again the total voltage or supply voltage will be appeared across vt now what will be the value of this particular waveforms see during off state of the switch just i am talking about this switch during off state the voltage across this part it will be vm sin omega t and the voltage across this part it will be minus e or dc that means the potential difference across the switch during off state that should be vm sin omega t minus e that is why if we can think about this particular region that is 0 to alpha then we can draw this waveform in this way as it is vm sin omega t minus e that is why when at the point of 0 there is a no voltage that means the actual voltage of the switch that is minus c that is a minus c now when the supply voltage increases with a certain value that is why the supply voltage is increases with a certain value and when it is reached up to the point of sin n sorry that is vm sin alpha then this point is defined by vm sin alpha so this is the actual waveform due to presence of the which is appearing across the switch during op state similarly we can <coughs> explain this part also okay in this particular case the supply voltage is maximum for the reverse for the negative biasing condition or negative half cycle that is defined by vm as i know in the previously at is 
and thus the back MF is there that is why it should be added to back MF that is why we can say this particular peak that is defined by E plus VM similarly this point will be VM sin alpha as this point is defined by alpha that is why expression should be Vm sin alpha minus E okay and this can be represented by E plus Vm sin beta minus alpha as this point is defined by beta minus alpha that is why this is the expressions for the waveforms okay as the RL load is there that is why similar to previous lecture we are going to analysis the total operation through two parts one steady state operation and through transient operation first we are going to discuss about the total situation that can be happened for steady state operation okay so in steady state operation from the circuit diagram we can write the voltage equation that is Vm sin omega t equal to R into I0 plus L into I0 dt plus E. Okay. Now go to the diagram first. So in this diagram, it can be easily identified that when the supply voltage is Vs, then the voltage drop across throughout the circuit that is first is I0 into R if we consider the I0 is the output current and L plus L into DI0 D2 plus additionally the back MF is there that is defined by minus E. That is why we can write the expression <coughs> that is I0 we can write the expression that is this one R into I0 plus L di 0 dt plus E. Okay. Now, the first thing, the solution of the equation. Okay. We consider that is I 0 t which is having the two components. Number one that is steady state component and number two that is transient component. But in this case as we are using a DC motor for application purpose at the question for back MF is there that is why this steady state operation can be divided by the two parts number one IS1T and IS2T what is the stands for IS1T that is due to AC source sorry <coughs> due to AC source voltage that is the steady state component due to AC source only and this one is the steady state component due to the DC counter EMF plus that is the transient component that is actually for the transient voltage due to transient voltage. So there is a expression which is defined by the three individual currents one for AC supply different one for counter EMF and last one for transient operation as we are using RLE load as the L is there that is why we should satisfy the transient voltage. Okay. So, we can write the expression in this way that is Vm by Z sin omega t minus alpha. Okay, this is actually the expression due to presence of the AC supply. Okay, next one that is minus E by R. Okay, so it can be represented by the counter EMF. That is why the supply is E counter EMF by R that is the current expression. Okay. And the last one that is a transient case that is defined by A into E to the power <coughs> minus R by L into T. So this is the first expression. Now we should find out this constant part. Okay. And we should satisfy some boundary condition from the waveforms. So first at omega t equal to alpha or t equal to alpha by omega then I0 t equal to 0. Why? So go to the <coughs> diagram, sorry, go to the waveform at omega t equal to alpha. So at omega t equal to alpha, I am talking about this point uh, at omega t equal to alpha, what is the value of I0? That is 0. There is a no magnitude. That is why we can represent the term that is <coughs> I0 t equal to 0. So we can write the expression that is Vm by z sin pi plus alpha minus phi 
minus e by r plus a into e to the power minus r alpha by l omega. Okay, and this constant part a that can be equal to e by r minus v m by z sin alpha minus phi e to the power r by l omega r alpha by l omega. So already we have get the value of this constant part. So we can <coughs> we can replace the value a from this side to this one. So the expression will be i zero t that should be equal to v m by z sin omega t minus alpha minus e by r plus under bracket e by r minus v m by z sin alpha minus phi e to the power r alpha by l omega into e to the power r by l. So after further modification or simplification, we can get the result that is i zero t equal to v m by z sin omega t minus alpha minus e by r plus e by r minus v m by z sin alpha minus phi, and it is represented by this exponential term that is exponential of the bracket that is r by l omega is a common part, and the remaining part that is omega t minus alpha. For further simplification, we will have that is v m by z we have taken is a common part. Then the remaining part that should be sin omega t minus alpha minus sin alpha minus phi exponential of minus r by l omega omega t minus alpha minus r by l one minus e x p exponential of r minus r by l omega omega t minus alpha. So. From this above equation, we can easily find out the alpha term. But now, in case of the extension angle beta, depends upon the above expression. So the average output voltage can be defined by this expression. That is, I DC that should be equal to the voltage by R. As it is a steady state operation, or we are going to calculate the average value. That is a no question for Z. That is depends on the R. So the upper part that is defined by the voltage expression, that means average voltage that can be calculated by number of peaks by the complete cycle. That means one by two pi integration of that peak is confined to a particular region here. That is alpha to beta. That means V m sin omega t minus c is a complete expression for the voltage as in case of the output voltage across the load that is not V m sin omega t. As the question of the back EMF due to application of the RL load, RL E load that can be replaced by V M sine omega t minus E and d omega t. So, from this equation, we can solve this part. That is one by two pi R under bracket V M minus cos omega t alpha to beta minus E omega t alpha to beta. So, considering these two limit alpha, sorry. So, considering these two limit alpha to beta, we can have the expression that is one by two pi r v m cos alpha minus cos beta minus e into beta minus alpha. Okay. So, this is actually the expression for average output current. So, this is the expression for average output current. Okay. Now we can calculate easily the average output voltage by using this expression. That means, <coughs> that means VDC that should be equal to E plus IDC into R. So average output voltage that is the actual voltage across the load as well as the back EMF. As the back EMF, the nature of the back EMF that is the DC supply or a Normal steady means it has a constant magnitude. That is why we can add this part means E plus I D C into R. Okay, so the final expression for the V D C that is equal to E plus one by two pi V M cos alpha minus cos beta minus E into beta minus alpha. So in this way we can calculate the average output voltage and average output current as well as all the steady state and steady state and transient component during the operation. Okay, so thank you very much for investing your valuable time for my lecture session. Thank you very much.